Hi everyone, this is Congressman Matt Gates, and within the last few hours we've been able to receive copies of the Inspector General's report that details a variety of allegations of misconduct against senior officials at the FBI. I'm going to be walking through a few of the highlights. There's obviously much more that we're going to go through and identify for folks in Northwest Florida. There's a lot of oversight we've got to do following these revelations, but I wanted to go over some of the high points. Before I do that, it's important to note, this is the Inspector General for the FBI. So it is a part of the FBI. This is essentially the FBI's own process that they have established to root out improper conduct in their agency. That's not to say that the Inspector General isn't to be trusted or relied upon. I think that a variety of the factual claims that are made in the Inspector General's report are largely true. They are consistent with the information that we have obtained through congressional investigations. And so I want to walk through some of the high points and the issues that I think we'll be seeing on the news and the issues that will provoke further oversight on the part of the Congress. The big headline, we'll stop him. We'll stop him. That is from Peter Strzok, the former head of counterintelligence for the entire FBI talking about Donald Trump. Now, how did we get there? How did we get to the guy who led the Hillary Clinton email investigation, went on to the Mueller probe, head of counterintelligence for the FBI, making such a statement about a presidential campaign in the United States? A few key points of context. On July 26th, Peter Strzok's girlfriend, Lisa Page, sent him a text message saying, Hillary must win now expressing her preference for Hillary Clinton. One senior FBI official making that statement to another, Hillary must win. In response to that text message, Peter Strzok replies, well, we've got to get the case filing done. He's essentially saying, if we want Hillary to win, we got to wrap up the email investigation in response to his girlfriend's request. Just four days later, after they have this discussion about Hillary winning and concluding the Hillary Clinton email investigation, four days later, it is Peter Strzok who opens a counterintelligence investigation against the Trump campaign based on George Papadopoulos. So again, really critical context. Four days before Strzok opens on Papadopoulos, his girlfriend is telling him Hillary Clinton must win. Then... Just a week later, on August 8th, we get Lisa Page saying to Peter Strzok, you know, is it really true, you know, is Donald Trump going to be president? And Peter Strzok replies, no, no, he won't. We'll stop him. Now, why is this important? Democrats, the media, they've all said, well, everybody has a personal political opinion. That doesn't necessarily mean that people's opinions affect the official work they do. The inspector general concludes that when you're talking like this, we'll stop him on an FBI phone as the FBI head of counterintelligence just investigated Hillary Clinton on the investigation of Donald Trump that you yourself started. You have moved beyond expressing your personal opinion to a willingness to take official action to frustrate the electoral success of Donald Trump. We'll stop him. That was the mentality of the very people who cleared Hillary Clinton, who then went on to the Trump investigation. I also want to talk about another key point, another issue, another uh, entity that we'll be learning about. FBI attorney number two. Now, we don't know this person's name yet, but FBI attorney number two says the day after the election to another FBI employee about how he's so numb, how he wishes there was more he could have done to stop Donald Trump from becoming president of the United States. But here is the important part. FBI attorney number two is the principal, the primary FBI lawyer that goes to work with Robert Mueller on the special counsel's investigation. And FBI number two, after saying, oh, how, how tragically sad he is after the election, while he is on the Mueller team, while he is the primary FBI lawyer on the Mueller team, he texts to another FBI employee, viva la resistance. You literally have someone investigating the president of the United States, associating themselves with the resistance movement? 
Give me a break. Now, ultimately, FBI attorney number two is removed from the Mueller probe, but that individual still works at the FBI, still works there. I want to know who it is. I want to know what work FBI attorney number two actually did on the Mueller probe and how that could have created this bias or led to this witch hunt that is built on a false premise. Now, how, how do we get to the point where you've got an FBI that has so dramatically departed from their initial mission, from their calling to investigate facts and prosecute criminals? How do they go from that to this political hackery where you're saying, we're going to stop him, we're going to weigh in you know, and make sure he doesn't become president. It's viva la resistance. Well, the FBI has a public affairs research project. They literally have an entity at the FBI dedicated to public opinion, and I would say politics. At the public affairs research project, you had FBI employees that were, that were tasked with looking at newspaper articles, giving background to reporters. Um, they were very critical of Fox News. They called it the Fox News bubble that they were fighting against. They talked about outreach specifically to CNN, no less. I don't want an FBI that's focused on politics or public affairs. I want an FBI that is doing investigations. Again, a lot more in this report to get through, but let me just read you one of the parts that I thought really summed up this entire experience. This is on page 420 of the Inspector General's report. We are deeply troubled by text messages sent by Strzok and Page that potentially indicated or created the appearance that investigative decisions were impacted by bias or improper considerations. Most of the text messages raising such questions pertained to the Russia investigation, which was not part of this review. Nonetheless, when one senior FBI official, Strzok, who was helping to lead the Russia investigation at the time, conveys in a text message to another senior FBI official, Page, that we'll stop candidate Trump from being elected after other extensive text messages between the two disparaging candidate Trump, it is not only indicative of a biased state of mind, but even more seriously, a willingness to take action to impact the presidential candidate's electoral prospects. This is antithetical to the core values of the FBI and Department of Justice. And it continues, these text messages led us to conclude that we did not have confidence that Strzok's decision was free of bias. When our own FBI is saying that they're not confident that investigative decisions were free of bias. It validates the work that we have been doing to have real oversight so we're prosecuting the real crimes and the real criminals. Hillary Clinton was never subjected to a true investigation because everyone investigating her was hyper aware of the election, they wanted her to win, and they did not want her to have any retribution or retaliation against their agency because they thought she was president. In these text messages with FBI attorney two, there's literally a discussion where someone says, I just interviewed the president. And then the reply was, you know, how odd that was. And the person said, well, the future president, Hillary Clinton. They were for Hillary, they were against Trump, and our job as the elected representatives of the people is to make sure that this kind of crap doesn't continue to infect the presidency of Donald Trump, working hard to lift people up, give prosperity to all Americans, and to establish a safer world. That's what we're gonna be fighting for. The oversight's gonna continue, and I look forward to checking back very soon.